So should it be made harder to drill for fracking? Well, Charles Perry is co-founder of the Second Nature, which consults on green measures for businesses. And Simon Moore is an environment and energy researcher at the Policy Exchange Think Tank. Many, uh, well, good afternoon to both of you gentlemen. Uh, Charles Perry, to you first. Uh, some areas have been uh, written off from this. They're off limits. So that's a good thing, I guess. Are you pleased or would you prefer a complete ban on fracking? Well, we look at this in terms of what is sustainable. So sustainable economically, sustainable environmentally, and sustainable socially. And I guess the question is, you know, do the risks uh, not outweigh um, the benefits in terms of fracking? Uh, you know, we have other things like solar energy. The costs have come down enormously. And I think economically, socially, and environmentally, that's more acceptable. So. Here we are subsidising fracking in certain parts of the UK with £100,000 to each local authority and 1% share of the revenue. But we're not offering £100,000 and 1% share of the revenue for solar farms and other clean community energy schemes. And of course fracking is still fossil fuels and the greenhouse gases associated with burning fossil fuels, we know the problems. We're trying to decarbonise the country off our dependence on fossil fuels. So I would say as an expert that actually the new minister, and I congratulate him on his new role, but he's been badly advised. I mean, he's new to energy and climate change, but I think that actually the risks here could be as bad as coal given methane leakage, and there are numerous incidents in America of methane leakage associated with fracking exploration. OK, Simon Moore, let's bring you in on this. Uh, we're talking there about the uh, many unknowns with fracking and the risks involved. Is it worth the risk? Um, at the moment, there are, as you say, a lot of unknowns. The only way that those unknowns around cost, to a certain extent around the cost of complying with the environmental regulations that the government is rightly putting in place on shale, will only be discovered through a process of commercially oriented exploration. That's what today's licensing round will allow to develop, and that's what's going to need to happen. It's far too soon to say whether shale will either be a panacea to the complaints about high gas prices or about uh, uh, as a means of helping to reduce the emissions that we currently have from coal, which is a much dirtier uh, source of energy. However, we're not going to find that out until exploration of the kind that's been given the go-ahead today takes place. Charles Perry, do you accept that, that it's vital to explore these potential sites just so that we know what we're dealing with? We know that there's shale gas there, but we just don't know if we can extract it yet. So the exploration phase is, is crucial, isn't it? Well, the British Geological Survey says that 10% of Britain's shale could be exploited, but it'll only be commercial by 2022 at the earliest. Meanwhile, you know, we have the sun every day and it's free source of energy from nature. The technologies have already been developed to the point of cost-effective harnessing of the sun's energy. We don't have to pay for the in input costs. The cost curves are coming down and of course the cost curves associated with gas and oil and coal are only going in one direction which is up. Now in this country we're going to have grid parity for solar in two years time. That means the same price and then it'll get cheaper for solar energy than fossil fuels. So why do we start investing in fracking now where it's only going to be commercially viable in 2022 where already we have solar commercially viable today? Now if you're saying it's not an either or and we should do both, I do think we should test uh, to see the um, risks and opportunities around shale. But let's not expect that we can replicate the United States, which is a massive country where fracking wells are miles away from local communities. Whereas here we're in, we have an island, we have huge water risks the aquifers in the southeast could potentially be contaminated. We're talking 80 meters away from the drilling site, aquifers that provide our drinking water. OK, uh, Simon Moore, interested in what your view is on the, the, the public move for fracking. You're obviously in favor of it, but do you think the PR campaign uh, uh, pushing people to support fracking in their area is working? Um, it, it, it really depends on, on the area and on, you know, on, on what the other opportunities for development around there are. I think we have to recognize that in the UK at the moment it is difficult to build a wide variety of infrastructure. A lot of the problems that we've seen around shale developments in some part of the country, we've seen around hostility to wind developments in other places, even things as 
seemingly innocuous as housing developments can generate huge amounts of local opposition. Um, I don't think shale is unique in this regard, and I think the solutions that are being proposed for shale, things like uh, community benefits, other means of passing the, uh, the returns on any uh, economic development, any productivity that happens as a result of shale, are things that also need to be taken into consideration as means of solving the planning problems that face other uh, potential okay. developments. Okay, well, uh, Charles Perry, Simon Moore, many thanks for your thoughts on that, uh, that topic this afternoon. Thank you.